Hello, and welcome to another episode of Divine Downloads, formerly Practical Magic Musings, with me, your host, Cassandra Bodzak. And this is the podcast that perhaps you've been waiting for, um, explaining why the switch from Practical Magic Musings to Divine Downloads, but most importantly, why I decided to trade in my magic for miracles this year. And um, I have to say, I've been podcasting for a while now, um, both on my own and with other people. I've been on stages, I've been on TV, and I am most nervous about this podcast. And I think it's just because it feels very vulnerable and raw, and I sense that perhaps there's going to be um, some pushback on it, but I think it's important for me to share my truth with you and share what really illuminated for me um, the past few months that has really inspired a big shift in me and how I'm going about my work um, in the world. So first things first, let's just talk about... um, No, let's just get to it. Let's just get to it, actually. (laughs) So... On 11-11 this year, I had, it was almost like an energetic bomb was dropped on me. It was such an intense day for me, um, such a portal as it is for us all. And what happened was almost like if, I think the best metaphor I can describe it as is if you had progressively been losing your vision and you didn't really notice it so much because it was happening slightly and slightly day after day and then all of a sudden you know your mom or your dad or someone gives you glasses one day and now you can see things clearly and you're like oh my god I did not even realize that I wasn't seeing things clearly because that's kind of what happened with me I my I originally started with uh, my spiritual journey began with meditation it began with A Course in Miracles that was the first serious spiritual text I really took to, um, the first um, spiritual journey I really completed. And coming from that place, um, for those of you who don't know what A Course in Miracles is, A Course in Miracles is a metaphysical text um, that was channeled that is a 365-day workbook from retraining your mind from fear um, to love. And it also has a text and it has a teacher's manual as well attached. So it's a three-part book. And its whole premise really is that there, um, you know, only love is real. Everything else is an illusion. And it helps you with daily meditations and exercises actually start looking at the world through different eyes. It, for me, um has led to just so many beautiful things in my life. I found A Course in Miracles when I was in just the hardest place. Um, I was feeling so dark, so sad, so depressed um, with everything that was going on with my brother's health. And I truly was at a place, um, although I was not suicidal, I, I truly contemplated what the point of living was, if you can relate to that where, you know, I wasn't about to do anything about it, but I sat in that often of what is the point? How do I go on living my everyday life knowing that this person I love so much that has done nothing to deserve this um, is suffering so much and is fighting for his life? And, And I heard one night after lots and lots of crying and praying, meditate. And So the next morning when I woke up, I meditated, um, and by meditated, I mean I googled um, YouTube videos of guided meditations because I had never formally really meditated before, and I did not have a personal practice yet. So I started looking at meditations, um, and through that, I found some A Course in Miracles. um, I wanted to call it like preaching. It was like, um, I'm, I'm upset that I can't remember his name right now, but I will try to uh, go look it up and find him for, but it was like this reverend uh, down south that was preaching A Course in Miracles, and I would just play him all of the time, and when I listened to him speak, when I listened to him talk about this, you know, this kind of metaphysical Bible of sorts, right, I, I just, it was almost like space, grace space opened up for me. 
right? Like I had this space to function in the world again, where I started naturally feeling lighter, feeling more open to perhaps there, there was a meaning to all of this, or there, or there was a purpose to all of this, right? And so I had Marianne Williamson's A Return to Love on my bookshelf. <laughs> and it was a book that was actually given to me when I was in college by this graduate student that I was dating at the time. And I was going through a tough time about something. I don't honestly remember what it was now, but he gave me this book and it had all of his like notes and his highlights and all of that in it. And I remember looking for it and just being like, oh, this language is way too, way too God gaudy and and uh, Catholic and I grew up Catholic and and I just had a very interesting relationship with religion because I grew up in a very um, this is a whole other podcast <laughs> but uh, I grew up in a very Catholic family went did all my sacraments went to Sunday school church you, you name it the whole thing and and then when I was in college I was really trying to figure out okay well what does all that mean for me what do I really believe in God? And I think some of you guys can relate to that, um, especially around that time frame in your life where you're finally like on your own, you're not confined to, you know, your parents' beliefs anymore. And you're really trying to figure out not only what you believe as far as like what you want to eat or how you want to live your life, but also what your beliefs in, in God and a higher power are. So anyway, nonetheless, I put this book on my shelf and I did not look at it anymore. <laughs> and it had traveled with me um, throughout the years and it was still there for me on my bookshelf when I was going through all that and I read it and I remember just ingesting it like um like medicine and it's pretty much Marianne Williamson's memoir like version of some of the 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 most um powerful concepts of A Course in Miracles right weaving it through that so it's a very I recommend it I'm having all of my girls in the miracle mastermind um, read the book uh, before we begin and as a companion as we go through it because I think it really makes the lessons of the course and some of the main concepts of it really grounded and very practical. So anyway, I read this book and then I'm like, I have to buy A Course in Miracles. I do A Course in Miracles and whew, life changed. Life started changing pretty fast and what first started happening from doing A Course in Miracles and giving myself that daily spiritual time was I started just following what brought me joy. I stopped overthinking so much and I started just leaning towards the thing that I knew that were making me happy. And so that's kind of when I leaned even more on my blog, which at the time was like a healthy recipe blog called Go Sweet and Skinny, how far it has evolved. <laughs> um, I also started doing YouTube cooking videos. Um, I had a vegan, like kind of an underground kind of vegan cupcake company in New York all the while I was acting. So I had all this stuff going on and I was not, for the first time in my life, um, I had always been so, so ambitious and such like a goal setter, such like a planner, such a, let me make sure this happens, like a doer. I, w I mean, I, I sent out so many mailings. I sent out so many emails. I was just like so, so, so determined and ambitious. And something shifted in me um, to where I just started in this time. And I think it was because I was in the midst of such a, a scary time for my family um, and I think if any of you guys can relate that, if you've had a family member, you've had a crisis in your life where all of a sudden sometimes your your priorities shift and what's like forefront on your mind shifts. And so my agenda became less about I need to be the most successful person in the world and more about how can I be happy today so that I may be of use to my family, right? So that I can be a support system for my family, so that I can show up for my brother and show up for my parents in the way that they need. And so that was really through expressing myself more through the blog and through the baking. And when I did that, you know, a magical thing started happening is that people started reading my blog. People started following my Instagram. Um, things started moving. I even started getting inquiries for clients, um, all of which was not really intended simply because I was putting my energy, I was not trying to drive the car anymore, right? I wasn't trying to, you know, my whole life I was trying to drive that car. 
I wanted to, I, you know, I knew where I wanted to go. No one knew better than me. And I knew how to, I was, I knew all these steps I was going to take to get there and I was going to execute and I did. And it never really worked. I mean, I, I was moderately successful as an actress. I paid my rent as an actress. I got, you know, small parts on TV. I got, you know, bigger parts in independent films. Um, I did off-Broadway shows for, for an actress. I, I wasn't doing bad, but I wasn't happy. And happiness became the priority now. And so as I started leaning into that, as I started, you know, releasing my plans and going into, you know, that now what has become a cliche, I think, but that saying of following what lights you up, right? I genuinely did. That was kind of how I, you know, how I said that when I first started doing this work was because that was literally my MO at that time. It was like, what lights me up? What brings me joy? Can I do more of it? Because that's what I need. Because when I'm happy, when I'm joyful, when I'm positive, I'm productive and I'm helpful and I'm useful and I can be of service. Um, and when I'm sad and when I'm anxious and I'm depressed, then I'm not, then I'm out of it. Then I'm out of the game. You know, then I'm, I'm not, I'm not helpful to myself and I'm not helpful to others. And, um, and for those of you who have dealt with those kind of more long-term situations, you know, it's not just like, while this does work for a breakup, um, it's, it's very different than a breakup in the way that, you know, maybe in like, depending on the level of the relationship, maybe in like a couple weeks or a couple of months, you move through a breakup. But when you have um, a loved one or you or yourself is dealing with something uh, terminal or an illness or there is an ongoing situation, right, you actually just have to learn how to be differently within that circumstance because you can't expect that circumstance to change. And I think that's why A Course in Miracles resonated with me so much because A Course in Miracles is never about asking your circumstances to change. It is about changing how you show up in your circumstances, changing your thoughts about your circumstances, and allowing that internal shift to then will manifest in your circumstances changing to a certain degree or will manifest in you being peaceful within those circumstances, which either way would be heavenly, right? With either way is the goal. And so that's why, you know, oftentimes when I'm talking about asking for a miracle, according to A Course in Miracles, a miracle is a shift in perception. And so... Oftentimes when we're in a situation, you know, our prayer, let's say if we're not a Course in Miracles student, right, our prayer will be, dear God, or dear higher power, or source, or universe, or whatever, can you change him? Can you make him call? Or can you make that money show up? Or can you make that person sign the contract? Or whatever it is, right? But but in A Course in Miracles, our, our, our prayer is, can I look at this differently? Can I see this differently? right? Can you illuminate this situation for me so that I can see the truth of what's going on here? So that maybe what illuminates is, is I see the truth of that maybe he's tied up at work and that's why he hasn't called. And then in those moments, and often in those moments when I have asked for those miracles in the past, um, you know, the, the guy calls and he's like, oh my God, you would not believe what happened at work today. I'm so sorry I got stuck. I wanted to call you, like whatever, right? And now that's the miracle, right? And sometimes the miracle is that you get distracted, move on with your life and realize that that guy wasn't your guy anyway, right? Sometimes the miracle is, is that you, instead of wanting that client to sign the contract, you trust, right, in the divine plan. And when you're in that space of the miracle, you either, let's say, A, are guided to give them whatever information they need to feel safe to, to enter into your business relationship and then they do sign the contract. Or you see you, something is illuminated in you as to why maybe this contract's not in your highest good anyway. And so we, we open up the space for creative possibilities when we ask for the miracle. And so just to get back to that point, for me in that situation, I love the fact that A Course in Miracles wasn't about, you know, changing the situation because I knew that th there wasn't something that my human could do to change this situation, 
right? That all I could do, the best thing I could do would be show up as the best as I can for my brother, right? The best thing I could do would be able to be productive, look up different treatments, look up different things about his illness, be there for him, support him, care for him, right? Not try to, let's say, magically wave a wand and, and cure him, right? Because of course that's the prayer. Of course the prayer is to bring him help. Of course the prayer is to send divine angels and guides and everything to his side, right? But, but the prayer is also then, right? Change how I can show up in this situation, right? Let me not be at the mercy of whether or not I can change that circumstance, of whether or not that circumstance will change. Let me be my highest self within these circumstances, right? It's kind of like if you're wanting to get a job, right? And you apply for a job and you are, you know, you're, you're wanting that, you're like, I want this job, I want this job. Um, and then, and you do all your, you know, you're praying for this job, you're praying for this job, but then you don't get the job. And then you think, oh, well, my higher power, God, the universe source didn't listen. What? You're not acknowledging that there is a much higher plan. And that perhaps your mind thought that job was the highest of you or your mind thought that guy was the highest thing for you but your higher power your divinity knows something you don't know yet that you can't see with your human eyes right and so that actually brings me right back to 11 11. so what had happened is i also and i still do i love rituals i was born for rituals i love rituals um, I also love ancient traditions. I love learning about different mystery schools. Um, I've studied, you know, the Isis mystery school, Mary Magdalene. Um, I love, I, I love cooking, which is its own kind of like earth witchery, right? And using the magic of the elements of the earth, of the fruits and the vegetables, of the herbs, um, crystals and their earthly power right? I believe in the power of intention. But what I realized what had happened over the years and what had particularly risen to a height earlier this year was me not just using rituals. And, and I believe that rituals, I mean, rituals are in all major traditions, right? And what do rituals do? Rit rituals, I think, are so important. They solidify on the earth plane what the work we do on the spiritual plane. So if you've taken my Practical Magic course, if you've taken my Divine the You course, and we've done rituals together, it is because we've done some energetic work, we've done some spiritual work, we've gone into the unconscious plane, and now what we're doing is we're creating a, sim a, a, a symbol of that in the physical that we get to have as, as a reminder on our altar, on our meditation space, right? Um, if you've also worked with me, you know that I never force anyone to do rituals. If they don't feel comfortable, if that's not if that's not helpful for them, right? Because I don't believe ultimately that they are are totally necessary, right? I think they're a tool that's available to us. Where I think rituals go awry, where I am laying down the magic, and um, is when we we try to manipulate our circumstances when we try to manipulate external things without acknowledging a higher more divine plan so i just want to say that again to be very clear um about what i'm saying in this podcast is i think that that rituals are fantastic i think they go awry when we don't acknowledge a higher divine plan as well. You may have heard, you know, many spiritual teachers say, myself included, this or something better. To me, that little prayer, that little sentence is everything. That is the key. And when you stop saying that, when you stop saying, you know what, dear God, I really want this job, it seems like the perfect job. It has a great salary. It has a great company. I'm so excited about it. God, I really want this job. Please let them pick me. That that's gearing a little bit towards magic, right? Um, 
And, and then when you add a ritual to that, right, that's kind of when it's considered a spell. Well, now I'm going to do a spell that this company is going to hire me. Now, what, what shifts it from miracles to magic, um, from, from magic to miracles, I should say, is simply you saying, dear God, your higher power, dear universe, higher divin divinity, right? I'm really excited about this job. It feels like it's going to support me. It feels like it's what I'm called to do. I give it up to you, God, spirit, source, divine self. If this is in my highest good, please help me say anything I need to say, do anything I need to do, show up as I need to show up for them to recognize me as the perfect candidate for this job. And if it is not in my highest good, please let me feel peace in my heart if it should not turn out, right? So that, that's, that's a very simple shift. <clears throat> but what happened to me on 11-11 and what I want to be just completely honest and candid about with this because it, it did attribute to a big awakening for me and um, it is very prevalent right now um, in the spiritual world is that I was using magic instead of asking for the miracle sometimes. And so what that means is I was doing a ritual with some very specific intentions and not opening up that little space for the divine plan. And then what happened on 11-11, I had, I had done a, a few very specific manifestation rituals. And they were specific in exactly what I wanted to happen, when I wanted to happen, which is a lot of the stuff we hear, right, in manifestation of what you should do. And here's the thing. Um, you guys probably know if you're listening to this. I am a very powerful manifester. I, my whole life, I've manifested things. Um, and, and especially when I got my rituals into it, um, you know, it became a, a thing among people, even among people in my closer circle too, right? That would text me for rituals and, and, and spells and all the sorts. And it's fun, right? It's fun. I, you know, it, it's so fun. And I think it is a beautiful creative expression of our spirituality, right? Um, but I think what illuminated me for ele on 11-11 was I saw the error in my ways. I saw that what I had been doing was not opening myself up to a higher, more divine plan for my life. And it was causing suffering. It was causing suffering, and I saw not only how it was causing me suffering, but also how it caused some of my friends suffering, because we do not know what's in our highest good, and our, I'm just going to call it our earth minds, right? Our consciousness on this planet is a fear-based consciousness. What does that mean? That sometimes our desires come from a place of fear. Sometimes you want to, you want that guy to call you or whatever it is, right? You want that guy to call you because, because you are in a, a lack mentality, right? Around romantic love. So there's part of you that has clung in its attachment to this person because you are saying, well, I, uh, I, um, I don't trust that there will be someone even better for me. I don't trust that if I pass up this offer that I'm ever going to get anything like this again. And let's be honest. I mean, I've done that before. When I think of, and this is being super straight up, and I'm going to do an, a fall, another podcast upcoming, I just haven't gotten to it, on my amazing love story and my partnership and my engagement and all that stuff, but the guy I dated before I met my, my soon-to-be husband was all wrong for me. He was a great, great human. He was a great human. I have so much love for him. Um, a brilliant man, a loving man. Um, we shared some really beautiful times, but but fundamentally wrong for me, right? Was not in my highest good and on on a lot of levels. But but my 
fear-based mentality had me, you know, I would, and I'm, I, I, I can't believe I'm saying this, but I'm saying this, forget we're going here, girls. Um, you know, I would light candles when we got into fights, I would light candles and, you know, do all, like, do this kind of stuff to, like, kind of, pat, like, patch things up in a way, right, where I think if I had actually instead sat in prayer um, and asked for the miracle, asked for the shift in perception around some of the things that happened, it would have been illuminated to me much sooner that, hey, this is an amazing human. This is not your romantic life partner, right? And I think, you know, I, I think a lot of us can relate to that. And maybe if you can't relate to it romantically, you can relate to it around your career, around something else in your life, where I remember, you know, I see this, I've seen this in myself, and I've seen this in my clients, where perhaps somewhere along the road, you clung to a career dream that was not even full of yours. And here's the tricky thing. Here's the tricky thing when it comes to, let's say, professional accolades, especially now in the world we live in, right? We already live in a, a, a world that is dominated with a fear-based consciousness, right? So that means that essentially the world believes that, that lack is possible, right? That, um, that we have something inherently to be scared of, right? That, there's, that, that, that we can be, that we are, you know, there is a part of us that is not that our truth is not our innocence, is not our divinity, so to speak, um, that believes in scarcity, that doesn't see infinite potential, right? And so when we make, and if you listen to my Miraculous 2020, I'll include the, the link below because I really did. This year is New Year, and it's not too late. It's still January, guys. You can start your New Year whenever you want. I truly believe that so much of our goals and our planning and our ambitions and our aims and what we want to manifest in our life is because we look around to our left and to our right and on Instagram and on our Facebook and we say, well, so-and-so just bought this like mansion of a house or whatever, or so-and-so just got the Mercedes or that person's walking around with a Chanel bag or, you know, she's vacationing in Bora Bora or whatever is going on. And we make our goals based on that. And I don't want you to feel guilty about it because we are all susceptible to it, okay? Even myself, right? No ascended masters on this podcast. <laughs> listening or here, right? And if you are, call me up if you're an ascended master and you're listening. I'll interview you. Um, but, you know, the, the thing is, is that we, um, we need, you know, I did that in the workshop. So if you're curious about this, about kind of realigning your goals and, and opening up for a higher power to step in and direct your vision and your goals for 2020, then click that below. It's free and I, I think you'll enjoy it and I'll really give you a good perspective on this uh, concept further. But anyway, to iterate my point, um, what happens is we, we look at these things and then we Again, we try to manipulate them or white knuckle them and manifest them in a way that says, well, I want to manifest, let's say, I want to manifest being in vogue, right? I, let's say that's a thing you want, right? And why do you want it? Well, maybe on some level you feel like, well, if you're in vogue, people will respect you. If you're in vogue, you'll feel some validation, whatever. It doesn't really matter where you want it. Maybe you saw the... Your, your role model or your expander or whatever you want to call it um, was in vogue. So now you want to be in vogue. Okay. And you're manifesting the ish out of being in vogue. And let me tell you, as someone that has done this in the past, and like I said, I'm speaking to this as someone that has done this, <laughs> um, you can do it. Absolutely can do it. And I've done stuff like that in the past. But, but what happens is that it's not always in our highest good. What happens is sometimes, and, you know, one of the things that shifted for me when I released this, and I've released it time and time again, I think this is, you know, why I wanted to start with um, 1111 and then work back to when I found A Course in Miracles is to have you know that, you know, I actually started with miracles and detoured into magic with 
you know, some of the consciousness that was going on and, and also from a place of play and fun, right? Which I don't think is inherently wrong. And I don't think, and like I said, it's really that difference, that difference of, of, of manifesting, let's say in a miraculous way, let's call it miraculous manifesting <laughs> and manifesting in a um, magical way. Is in a magical way, as you say, higher power, divine, source, universe, whatnot, I would like a husband this year. I would like a four-bedroom house on the beach. I would like to make a million dollars, right? <laughs> so that's magical manifesting. When you're like really specific and you're like, this is what I want, that and, and that's all I want, and in fact, you know what, I want it by July, and it and it's going to look like this and i need it i need it to have i need it to be a blue house and it needs to have a a white bathtub or whatever right and i want him to you know he needs to make this much money and i want him to be 6 foot 2 and whatever it is right when we do that we're in our magic zone <laughs> we are not allowing for the miracle we are we are you know we are as they call it with ego right we're edging god out we're edging our divine out. We're not making space. And so what happened to me on 11-11 this year is I realized there were a couple of things in my life where I did that, where I was so in my magical manifesting zone that I didn't leave space for a divine plan. That instead of saying, instead of asking for the miracle in those situations, instead of of getting quiet and it's it's ironic to me honestly because a few years ago I went to a Marian Williamson workshop and I still have the recording of the meditation on my phone she did because it was so beautiful it, and it's something that I've done pretty regularly in my life since where I do a meditation and I welcome in divine source to download to me the highest use of me in that year that month whatever and I allow myself to take a step back, right? And this was actually my A Course in Miracles lesson yesterday, right? Was I take a step back and allow the divine to guide me, right? And so oftentimes what's come through in those meditations when I take a step back is not what I had on my goal list. Maybe on my goal list, I had to, you know, I was like, well, I want to do a YouTube show or whatnot, <laughs> right? Even this podcast. When I first started this podcast, it was called the Lightmaker Podcast um, years ago. And I think I started it from a place of, oh, maybe I should have a podcast. And, you know, I like to talk and I have a lot of, you know, downloads to give. And then when I started it again this time, it was from that place where I got the download. I literally got the divine download and why I'm really grateful that the name is now Divine Downloads, is because I I got the message, hey, take the pressure off of organizing guests. Just use this as a, a place for you to channel what comes through you, for people to come who want to listen to that, listen to that, because I wasn't vibing with all of the interviews and the organization and all of that stuff. And so oftentimes what happens is when we allow the space for the Divine Download, the form shows up in an even better way, an even more us way than we could imagine, right? And so the, um, so on 11.11, I have this breakdown. I see what I've done. And, and I, and of course, I'm, I go into meditation. I'm in deep meditation about it. And I realize, you know, something, something, another clue that happened, right? And I also want to give this disclaimer is that it's very interesting because um, even though I have a training called Practical Magic and I have, um, you know, uh, rituals in my Divinely You course as well, I have rituals in pretty much all of my courses, right? Um, in none of my courses do I actually teach magic, right? Um, as far as in all of my courses, I still stand behind every single course, including Practical Magic, because in Practical Magic, we do learn about miracles. We do learn about our thoughts. We do, we do, um, we aren't, 
we are in that space of constantly opening up to our higher power. We're not magically, manipulatively manifesting, right? So I gave it the title Practical Magic. And Practical Magic, even when it was the title of this podcast, for me, symbolizes the practical and the spiritual, like the earthly and the heavenly. It symbolizes what I really feel like is a lot of my essence of the let's do the earth work, but let's tap into spirit first and get into alignment and get directions, right? So my 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 meaning behind practical magic is actually way more aligned with miracles. And it's only because on 11.11, and, and as I've been sitting with this, and obviously I take a big responsibility for everything I put out in the world, um, that I realized I wanted to move away from that languaging, um, especially at least in my podcast um, and how I'm talking because magic is a different thing than miracles. And magic is a different thing than connecting to your divine and asking for what your highest manifest your the highest manifestation of yourself and what you're here to do is and so when I sat with that it was very interesting because I saw it so clearly I saw it so clearly um and I saw that I was trying to and I had been about certain things in my life trying to manipulate things that that weren't the highest good for me because I couldn't see the highest good and I wasn't leaving that space for the miraculous, you know? And it was so interesting, you know, just to to use go back to that example because I mentioned about my ex, that after that relationship, when I really tuned in to a different space, when I really, I not only got clear about what my deepest heart's desires was in a partner, and I'll go through this more in the the love story podcast but I also got really clear I also got really open I got really open to divine guidance right I got really open to the fact that I did not have my best interests in mind right which is actually the most powerful thing you can do the most powerful thing you can do is recognize that you do not always have your best interests in mind that so much of your consciousness thinks it knows what's best for you and that if we don't turn if we don't do our prayer and our meditation in the morning if we don't turn that we don't put that on the altar right like I like to say if we don't if we don't turn that over in the middle of the day or in the beginning of the day so to speak then it's even more likely that we're going to think we're we know what's best right instead of welcoming in that guidance instead of saying oh well you know that meeting got canceled okay what if that's for the best? What if that was the highest, most divine thing? If I gave it up to God or source in the morning and said, hey, guide my day, guide my day. Let me use my time wisely to do things that bring me joy, to serve on a higher level, to be the light, whatever you want to say, right? You don't even have to say that. There's a prayer in the Course of Miracles that says, where would you have me go? What would you have me do? What would you have me say and to whom? What miracles would you have me perform today? What a beautiful, beautiful, beautiful prayer to start every morning with, right? Essentially saying, use me, use me, divine flow through me, right? And when we're in that space, whew, we're in the space of infinite potential. We're in the space of abundance. So that when that guy doesn't call or you get a, you know, you don't get, get a bad vibe from him, you release it like that. Because you trust in a higher plan. So when the client doesn't work through or the person cancels the meeting or whatever happens, or you don't get the apartment that you wanted, you trust that there's a higher plan. And that's, that's you know, an interesting thing happened. Some of you might know my friend Sahara, um, who we did a, a ritual, you know, we call it, we call it the honey jar spell, but it's a ritual, right? To call in her house. But the difference was, right? She, she had, she had placed an offer on a certain house. It, it fell through, right? And she trusted that rejection is divine redirection, right? Because she trusted that there was a bigger plan than what she knew, Right? 
she saw it. Obviously, her and her husband were like, this is a great place. I'm going to do this, right? And then in that moment when it didn't fall through, she knew that there might be something because she's in a daily spiritual practice, right? And I remember we talked about it and we're like, we don't even know. Maybe there was mold in that house. Maybe there's another house that you're supposed to get. Maybe there's a reason you're not supposed to live in that place right now because you want to be mobile. for Like there are so many possibilities for why that wasn't in her highest good. And because she was able to do that, when we did our ritual, it wasn't about a specific house. It was about calling in, right? And here's the kind of quote unquote rituals or spells, if you want to call them, that I support, right? It's about, it was about calling in when we did that, that ritual, how it's going to feel when she's in her, her home, right? How, how supported she's going to feel, how beautiful it's going to be, right? It wasn't about, oh, I need uh, apartment 3112 on Malibu Avenue, you know, and, and that will be mine and I'm going to get it for 1 million or whatever it is. No. It was saying, hey, directing the divine, directing source, directing the universe, directing all the higher intelligence, all of her guides and angels and saying, hey, I direct me to the home that's in my highest good right now right? And whether that's renting and whether that's buying and whatever area of town it is, just direct me. I am open and ready to receive, but I really am ready for this home, right? And then she found it. It was, I think, like three days later, she found the place that she's living in now. But it was because once again, we, she was in that space, right? Where you can do that ritual. You can do that, you know, if you want to call it a spell, whatever you want to call it, but when you're in that space and you're like, I'm ready. You know, I'm ready for my partner and this is how it's going to feel like, right? And this is, this is you know, how, how I, that's how my energy is going to shift and that's how it's going to be or whatnot, right? We get into that feeling, those overall characteristics. And then we say, hey, you know, I got a crush on Brad over there, but him or something better. Right now I'm thinking maybe it's him because I got a crush on him. But you know what? I give it up to you. God, angels, whoever, I give it up to the divine that maybe it's something better. Right now, you know what, right now I really want to make this, this uh, program work, right? But you know what, if this is not the right program for me to do, this or something better, give me the, let me know, let me know. I am here and I am open. So that is why I'm giving up magic for miracles. Because I am committed, and I'm committed to also teaching this. Um, I'm committed into releasing this idea that we know exactly what we want, right? And welcoming in the space for a plan higher than us, right? I'm committed to getting back to that roots of miracles, and I did. And on 11.11, I remember after my meditation, I was literally magnetically drawn to my Course in Miracles book. and. And we, I had some travel around that time. I literally brought it with me and I started rereading the whole text, right? I started going back and looking at all the things I already highlighted and getting back into it. And I have been doing it as not only daily practice, but a constant reading. Um, once again, after doing it, you know, doing the course over a few times um, over the years, the whole workbook and, and reading it all and, and teaching it even before, I really felt, wow. This is the truth. This is the truth. And what peace and what joy and what happiness awaits us. Greater than we could even imagine. A beautiful example of something that you might want to say I quote unquote manifested or allowed was in the space to hold, as I think is a more appropriate way to say it, from the course was me being on ABC's The Taste. I was on, for those of you who don't know, um, I was on this ABC show called The Taste with Anthony Bourdain and Nigel Lawson and Marcus Samuelson and Little Lefebvre. And I literally just got a call from producers one day from ABC after recording um, cooking videos, like literally in like once, it was one take cooking videos because I didn't know how to edit at the time. So I literally press, it was, I forgot what the, 
I want to say it was Photo Booth, like the old school like video thing that comes on your Mac. I was using Photo Booth. I was doing it in one take. The lighting was horrendous. It was like yellow in my like kitchen in New York. And I was doing these videos and producers from ABC found it and called me up and asked me if I wanted to be on the show, if I wanted to audition for it, whatnot. And what I can tell you is at that time, I wasn't, I wasn't manifesting a cooking show. I wasn't, I wasn't, I, you know, I wasn't, I didn't have like some stringent goal of like, this is going to get me on TV. That's why I'm doing this. Not at all. I was following my joy and I was also in a daily prayer for, for more abundance and opportunities, more responsibility, more, I wanted something to blossom in my career. And I was at a time where I didn't know. I was so humbled by the whole situation that, and, and this is, I think, when so much, so much of the, the miracle happens, right? It happens when we're humbled, right? The miracle happened when I was humbled by my breakup with my ex and it opened up the space to attract my, my real amazing partner, right? The miracle happened when I was so humbled by everything that was going on in my life that I realized that for the first time, I took my grasp off the steering wheel of I need to be a famous actress and just said, you know, let me just see what happens. Let me just see what I'm guided towards. Let me just see what I naturally desire to do. Do I naturally desire to pitch more people for auditions or create my own show or whatever I want to do or whatever, right? And I was just naturally drawn to doing the cooking stuff, right? And then through that, something greater than I could have even imagined manifested. I got that call. And when I look back at my life, every single time something incredible has happened, quote unquote, out of the blue, it was because I was in the space for miracles. It wasn't because I was working any magic, right? It was because I was open and I was humbled and I was open to a more, a, a more expansive, more magnificent plan than this mind could think of, right? And when I got off track and when I detoured, it was because I thought I knew best. It was because instead of listening, I was saying, hey, you know what? Uh, in real world time, my book came out last year, so I guess I should force another one out, right? Everyone else is doing books. I guess I should write a book. Everyone else is doing retreats. I guess I should do a retreat. Well, everyone else is, uh, you know, buying Chanel bag, so I guess I should buy a Chanel bag. Well, you know, everyone else is whatever the, whatever the freak it is, right? Everyone else is getting a dog. Let me get a dog. All the things we do. All the things we do or we say because of the pressures of the external world or the influence of the external world, instead of just honoring what lights us up showing up every day like a blank slate. We fear that if we don't plan, that if we don't plot, that if we don't do this, we won't get it. And of course, why would we? Why would we not believe that when so many self-help, uh, self-empowerment, marketing, business gurus are going to tell you, what is that? What is that? Um, there's this saying, uh, millionaires look at their goals once a day billionaires like their goals three times a day or something <laughs> right and here's the thing um there's so much like that out there right that's the consciousness of the world the consciousness of the world is that oh you can't trust your full unfolding unless you manipulate it well the conscious of the world says well if you know maybe you you know that person could be wrong, right? Or you could lose that job and it could be, could have been your the perfect job for you. The consciousness of heaven, divine consciousness, your higher consciousness says, if you didn't get that house, it wasn't your house. If you didn't get that job, it wasn't your dream job. It actually wasn't. You only think it was because you can't even see the possibility of what you're capable of, right? And so, yes, does it mean that we don't make human errors sometimes? Of course, right? If you've been triggered, if you've been emotional, if you've shown up as less than your higher self and you've sabotaged a relationship because of that, right? Yeah, perhaps that person had some potential with you. 
and you sabotaged it because you you weren't you weren't in your highest self. You weren't in prayer that morning. You forgot your spiritual practice. You let your wound speak higher than your holiness. Yes, that happens. It happens in all areas of our lives. But when you when you are connected to source and divine and you believe in miracles and, and you're a student or a teacher of a course in miracles, or you're a prescribed, let's say, to an abundant world, then you know, okay, there'll be another one around the bush. If I didn't show up, and you know, maybe it'll take another year, maybe it'll take two years, right? But we're constantly giving opportunities to show up as our highest self. You are, you know, I like that imagery um, of thinking of a baby, right? An embryo that becomes the baby. I've been, you know, I was reading into this sometimes about, uh, I went on this weird rabbit hole. I found this miscarriage um, empowerment lady on Instagram. And I was like, wow, this is really unique uh, that she's taking the stand on that. Anyway, and I was reading also about how, you know, a, our bodies will self-terminate a pregnancy if it, if it already knows that, you know, the child is not going to turn out healthy, right? If there's something wrong, let's say, you know, it, it's, you know, going to be missing uh, uh, an organ or, or something doesn't, right? Something doesn't kind of work, right? It recognizes it and it releases the pregnancy, it's not going to hold it to term, which is just like crazy divine if you think about that, right? How smart our bodies are, right? That our bodies are literally trying to give every life that we birth the highest chance of success, right? So that doesn't mean, of course, people aren't born with, you know, certain things that happen. But if you've made it to that stage and your body divinely deemed that you have a strong shot at, at doing this, at living, right? And if it can foresee to the best of its ability that that's not going to be a shot, let's say in your first months or something like that, then a lot of times it will release this baby. Anyway, kind of a morbid uh, comparison. But if you think about that in terms of your life, right? If the greater plan of life that's at work here knows like, hey, you know, that job's going to be good for like three months and then she's going to freaking hate it and she's going to miss out on this other job that's going to about to become available in a month because she's going to be in that job so she's not even going to be looking. We better just terminate this. We better just stop this. Let's not make it happen. Oh, well, you know, that guy right now she thinks is super sexy and cute and she wants to go out with, but he's, you know, he's going to be a fun time for a couple of months and he's going to leave her high and dry and we better just like, we better just protect her and get her out of this, let him show his cards early or whatever, let her, let her see the divine sight that this is not in her highest good so that she can meet her real person, right? And when we're in that moment, when we're asking for the miracle, that's when we see those things. That's when we're open for those things. That's when we, you know, we actually, they, there's that quote that says success is, is, or successful people move from failure to failure without any loss of enthusiasm. And now that is an entrepreneurship quote I can get behind. Why? Because that's the spiritual way. That's the miraculous way. If you can move from quote unquote failure to failure without any loss of enthusiasm, I'm going to venture it's because you believe in a more divine plan. Because you believe that, okay, well, great. I'm one step closer to the success. Because, that, okay, that was not going to work great. What's next? That's not going to work great, right? And you're moving through. Anyway, this is going to be, this is a long episode. I thank you for being here with me for this. It was really important for me to share um, this shift and why I shifted the podcast and um, why, you know, uh, I still stand by all of my courses and, and I teach exactly, you know, what I believe and what I say here. But um, I wanted to call myself out on and really shift around um, raise awareness for any of you guys who may have fallen into this trap as well as it is common um, to try to manifest from your thinking mind. And so I invite you to, in all areas of your life and as part of your daily practice, to open up to the possibility of a higher plan 
It doesn't mean you can't have goals. It doesn't mean that you can't, you know, like, you know, have a crush on someone or want be like, I want it to work out with this someone or I want to get that house or I want this work thing to happen or whatever. That's fine. But it's being in that space of saying, I want this or something better. It's the difference of when you do the ritual being like, I need this job at this company and I want this salary and doing a ritual and saying, I want a job that makes me feel like this. I want a job that lets me share my gifts with the world. I want a job that makes me feel financially supported, right? I trust in you to guide me there, right? That is just the simple difference between magic and miraculous. When we welcome in the divine and we open the fact that there is a higher power. Um, and and so, like I said, the the terms magic or whatever um, is used loosely um, in our society. I use it a lot. I love the term magic and magically and, and I feel like a magical person, you know, um, but I wanted to call awareness when I, I wanted to clear that up. And that's why I really wanted to shift it from the podcast into divine downloads, because that feels much more accurate for what this is. Um, and, um, and also just because I, I do want us to, and I, I want to be part of that consciousness shift that welcomes in this higher possibility. Um, according to the Course, it says that even the most, you know, uh, the greatest amongst us, the people that we look up to as, you know, world changers and, and making an impact are only a small sliver of what's possible for us, right? And I think when we all open up to that higher possibility, when we say this or something better, we say, I want something that makes me feel like this. And I, and maybe that will be going to Bora Bora. And maybe that will be something else, right? I want to feel rested and restored right now. And I'm thinking that a, a beach vacation would be great. Um, but I'm open to, to higher guidance, right? That's what I'm, that's what I'm holding space for right now, right? That's when, that's when, that's when things work. And when we ask for, miracles around those desires that we have right i want to i want a miracle around this we're also asking for an expansion and possibility right so if you're like i want to i really feel like i want to make a million dollars what does that really mean well i really want to feel financially free this year okay there we go and i'm open to creative possibilities I, I i need a miracle on it i'm i'm feeling pain right now because i don't have the my financial goal let's say i'm feeling pain right now I'm placing this on the altar that I don't have my financial goal right now and I need a miracle. And what that miracle sometimes is, is yeah, sometimes you get like a, a refund check in the mail, right? But, but oftentimes what that miracle is, is a shift in perception that illuminates an opportunity that you had not been able to see because you were so focused on looking at the fact that you didn't have the million dollars, right? That you forgot that there's a thing here that you can make a few thousand dollars off like tomorrow that you've been ignoring, an email you haven't responded to, a, a contact you haven't pinged about working together, right? When we're in that space of asking for the miracle constantly, what we are is we're expanding our, our mindset to welcome in possibilities. So 2020, I'm claiming it as the year of miracles and the year of divine sight and us being able to see from that higher perspective. And I hope you'll join me along for that. Um, and uh, for those of you who haven't heard, I am hosting a miracle mastermind. And I'm super excited about it. It is going to be an intensive group coaching program. So it's 365 days. We'll start February 1st. Um, to give people a time to get the books and, and get situated. And um, we'll be going every single day through the workbook lessons of A Course in Miracles. I'll be uh, sending uh, voice memos to the WhatsApp group, and we'll be having weekly uh, Zoom calls um, about the text and being able to also keep keep bringing it into your life, keep using the situations that are coming up into your life um, and melding it with the principles and A Course in Miracles so you can experience miracles in every area of your life and a shift in perception in every area of your life. Um, and so it's going to be a very intimate group, only I think 15 or 20 max um, uh, people am I allowing in it. 
it has been invite only. So right now it is there is currently a wait list for um for people um as as people accept or decline their invitation. Um I started off with some of the the ladies in my inner circle who have worked with me in the past, gave them first dibs on it since I knew it's going to be an intimate group. But if you feel strongly led, if you feel really called, if you feel the tingles and tapped in and tuned on and being like, this is my year of miracles. I'm ready to step up to do a course of miracles. I'm ready for this intensive group coaching program. I want you to send me an email um, at, you can see bodzak at gmail.com or you can do assistant at Cassandra Bodzak. Either way, it'll somehow get to me. Um, and I want you to tell me why you feel called and why you think you feel a good fit for it. Um, and, you know, if we um, can can make the space and if we have some spaces that open up um, I'm really looking to call in the women that feel very called and serious about this work that are willing to do this deep work and that are really committed to this uh, to this spiritual journey uh, for the year and at the end of the year you will also you will technically be a Course in Miracles teacher you will be um, that is the certification of the course Right, the course um, says that as soon as you complete um, the full course, you are you are welcome to be a teacher of it. And whether that manifests in your own yoga practice or life coaching practice or or however that does, or you're just you know still working um, as an accountant, but you now have a serious spiritual lineage. You have a grounded path um, and and really this beautiful foundation that you'll always be able to come back to. So, if that's you. Send me an email. Let me know that you feel called. Um, I do read everything, and um, it does make a difference to me um, how how called someone is. So cbodzak at gmail.com. Thank you for listening. Um, if you love this podcast, if you want more, if you have ideas, you know, please leave me a five-star review. Leave me a comment. It makes a world of difference in getting more ears on this podcast and letting people know this is worth a listen. If you have things you want me to riff on in the future, feel free to shoot me a DM over on Instagram or comment on one of my photos. I always read and and listen to all of them and I love your feedback. So thanks for tuning in and look forward to more divine downloads in 2020.